In this video, I'm walking you through how to do skin smoothing in Capture One. How Ever. This is a great video for you to watch even if you don't use Capture One because retouching and skin smoothing is not just taking away pimples or making it look like they have perfect orange peel pores. It's about a lot of other things. So make sure that you watch this and learn a little bit more about what skin smoothing is all about. Capture One. It'll work in any Capture One. I really feel weird about saying Capture 120. Anyway, here we go. So I've got this gorgeous picture of this beautiful bride here. Right now, I didn't really do any adjustments to it. Let me just reset the entire thing. The only thing I was doing is playing with the new high dynamic range that Capture 120 is, uh, is uh, you know, has here. They've got some new tools, new way of looking at it. Um, but let's just work with the, uh, the file as is, I don't want to do anything different to it. I just want to show you the skin smoothing. Uh, what is it that they call it? It's actually found in the color editor. Oh, they call it skin tone. Okay. So there are two different ways. I'm going to show you how to do this. One is kind of the reverse of the other. And depending on your workflow, you may or may not want to use one or the other. So, all right, we actually don't start in a uh, color editor. We start in layers. So two ways to do this. We are going to work in layers for both just so you can adjust things. It's kind of like when you work in Photoshop, you want to just be able to have as much control as possible. This video is brought to you by data color spider color manager and you can save up to $100. They know how important color is for us photographers, especially when it comes to skin smoothing like this. And right now until March 1st, you can save up to $100. Whether it's capturing a moody sky or perfect skin tone, getting color right can make or break your photo. That's why calibrating your display and managing your color process is essential to capturing the precise tones that you want. Now's the perfect time to check out Spider when we're talking about skin tones and color and all that fun stuff. So check out the deals in the description below. And I've also got a special link for you. That's my link. You click on it, click on it anyway, even if you're not going to get anything, it just gives me brownie points. All right, let's get back to skin smoothing here and capture one. Number one way of doing this, uh, as it was taught to me, it's called clown face where you make a clown face. So we're going to go ahead into the layers and add new layer. You can name it if you want to. I'm not into naming layers. Now the M tool turns on or off your mask. The way that it automatically adds it or that I have it, I don't know if that's a custom function or not, is that it's automatically adding a new empty layer. We'll play with the new fill later, layer later. All right, but we're gonna start with the new empty layer. That's what we have here. So what that means is if I hit B, it's gonna go to my brush tool or you can come up here to the brush tool and you know we're gonna draw the mask. And what you want to do is you want to just draw around her face and all the skin tones. Now with this picture right here, it's actually not a huge deal because the environment around her is not um, the same color as her skin tone as opposed to let's say if I did this picture which I'm choosing not to because I don't think it's close up enough to really show you the difference you know some of these tones in the wall are similar to the skin so if I were just go into skin tones um, and not do this whole masking process, it would select all of that too. So you really want to come in and do the mask, even though for this particular photo, I probably could get away without doing the mask, but I think this is better. So I did actually just click and drag to draw, but you don't see it because I didn't select mask. So um, you can go ahead and do that. I have, uh, if you right click, I have my auto mask selected. So um, you'll notice that come into play every once in a while. Uh, to be honest, it's not a huge deal, although maybe down here in these areas, if we were to play a little bit more, uh, it would be. But I want to I want to use the neck and I want to use um, her chest as well as her face. Now, after you've done that, you're going to press E for eraser or come up here to the top and click on your erase mask. I'm going to make my size a little bit smaller and I do like my, my hardness where it is right now so that uh, it's not very hard at all. And I'm just going to erase like her eyes a little bit less than that. Let me actually just zoom this in a little bit so I can see a little bit better. Uh, and I'm just doing command plus to zoom in and then pressing the space bar and that gives me my hand tool really quickly. Um, right, that's better. Okay, so I'm just gonna take away the eyes, her teeth, and then also her lips because that's a, 
a pretty big problem when you go to do this is that you don't want the lips to come into play. You don't want to, you know, decolor them or change the color of them. You just want to work with the skin. Um, and then, you know, you might need a little, little adjusting here if you go over uh, and that's fine. I'm not gonna be super picky because I wanna get to how to actually do this versus how to sit here for hours and, uh, <laughs> and draw out. Now you can see why it's called clown face, right? All right, so I'm just gonna zoom this back out for you guys. And again, you could go back in here and really, you know, you really do this if you want to. I don't think it's gonna create such a huge deal because these are not really the same tones you'll see later. So I'm gonna unselect M so we don't have to look at that. And what we wanna do is come over to our color editor and skin tone. Hey, like what you're seeing so far, hit the link below to download my free guide for posing inspiration. We could all use some. It's good for individuals, couples, and groups as well. So grab that super free right below. We're gonna use this tool right here, the selector tool, and you want to find sort of a an average skin tone. So you don't wanna go like here where it's too light uh, or under a shadow where it's too dark. You wanna go for like an overall average skin tone color. So I'm gonna go like right about here. Now immediately over here you see that's the color I selected right there and then this is the range that it's including in that color. I'm gonna expand that range just a bit just to make sure I'm getting all the different skin tones in there. And you can also kind of change it with the density here, but most people don't. Where it ends up falling tends to be a good spot, all right? So that's where we're gonna be. Now, I used to make the mistake of coming down here and starting with smoothness and going, why isn't it smoothening her skin? I don't understand. Um, that's not what this is. <laughs> what this smoothness is, I'm gonna reset it to 25, is it smoothing out, see this right here? The color selection, look at that move. All right, as I go down, now it's hardened it. So it's smoothing out your selection of color. So that's what that is. Again, from here, I would always go down to amount, and now we need to start with here. But what we actually want to do is you want to go down to uniformity first, so all the way on the bottom. Now, here's where you want to start off with the hue uniformity. Um, these are subtle changes, by the way, but what's going to happen, I'm going to go all the way up to 100, and then let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, is it's going to change the colors to all match more that area where you're going to see it the most is look at her cheekbones which are normally which are more red in this case because she has blush on as I move the slider you can see those cheekbones color starting to adapt to here they're not as red so it's doing that all over it's doing that entire thing all over so you don't want to go crazy and go to there because then I just took all the color out of her skin and we've made it all match right um, so maybe about here, that's good. What this is good for is if they're outside and they have red noses maybe, or you know, if there's a hand in the photo and that hand is a different color than the face, you're selecting both the hand and the face and matching the tone. Now we're gonna go into saturation and this will match the saturation throughout all of the skin tones here. So you can see the biggest difference when I go from here all the way up. You can see it actually desaturated her cheekbones again because those were more saturated than the selection that I selected. The biggest one you'll notice is with the lightness. So this is going to match the lightness of all the areas that we have selected to that one point, all right? So I keep reiterating that because it's all about that one point in this uniformity section here. So you don't wanna go necessarily crazy here, but this is pretty good, you know, if you've got uh, some issues with like too dark, too light, and this can like balance it out a little bit. All right, so once you've been done there, now you're gonna go up to the amount section. And the amount section, it seems like it has all the same stuff, but it, it changes everything as a whole that you've selected versus matching everything to that one point, all right? So let's just do it drastically with hue, making the hue go all the way up versus all the way down. You see how she went really green when I came up here and then went down, she got really pink, all right? So it's changing the whole thing as opposed to trying to match it, uniform it with the one point you selected. Same thing, our saturation can go way up. Uh, we call that Jersey Orange. Lindsay is not Jersey Orange, so I would never do that to her. And then you go all the way down and she looks like she should be in the morgue. So uh, I don't mess with saturation too much, to be honest. Um, the lightness is probably what I mess with the most and not 
huge right here, but you can see all the way dark and all the way light. It kind of is nice to just soften up the skin tone a little bit like that. So that is our whole way of doing it this way. All right, so we've just smoothed her out, smoothed out the skin tones a little bit, especially in matching her chest as well. We could actually go a little bit more, and you notice like mostly her chest is coming up here, right, to match. So I could do that a little bit more, but honestly, I like a little bit of a shadow on the chest because it you know brings the attention to the face rather than all being like one flat light. All right, so that was option one. <laughs> all right, uh, trust me, you're not going to wait here for a million years for option two. The other way to do this would be to have you have all your stuff here right that's all going to stay the same but the difference is we're going to come here let me just deselect that by the way now you can see the before and after right when i select and deselect the layer it just it adds a little bit of niceness okay the other thing that you can do is you can go and this time do new filled layer and if i press m we're going to see that the entire thing is selected right so that's a little bit different of a way to start. It's kind of starting in the reverse. Instead of selecting exactly what you want, you have the entire thing selected. Okay, so you've got your mask selected. Now you're going to go, uh, I'm gonna take off the M so I don't look at all that. Now I'm gonna go into my color editor, select wherever, I'm gonna select the pretty much exact same area, do my same expanding and such right as I did before really set all the same basic um, uniformity and, and saturation and hue I think we went a little magenta a little less saturated a little lighter like all the same basic stuff then we come up here and we go to clear mask and it took it all away then we go to our brush and then all we're doing here is we're painting it where we want it to be okay so seems kind of backwards right oh and then you also want to make sure that like your your flow by the way if you're not noticing a difference in change the flow is up right um, so you're just going or maybe you want the flow down because you want it like applying to this certain part and this certain part but not the other part all right so let me just take off that layer so then you can see the difference so it's just two ways of going about the exact same thing so that's you know there's really no difference other than my sliders are slightly different um but the cool thing is say you know i have this photo you know this one right here with all with all the ladies that we had before so maybe i just want to take the same settings that i had in this photo with that same smoothingness and i want to apply it to this one so normally what you would do i'm just going to control and select that one and then with this one as my primary one picked i'm going to go over to my layers and then this double one here double arrow that copies the settings and then you can click it and then decide which ones you want so i just want layer two because i want to paint it onto that next picture so i'll just hit apply apply okay and then i'm just going to come over to oopsies back to here <laughs> so I'm just gonna select these guys and then with my layer 2 now I can go in with my brush and actually I'm gonna hit M because that was the face where we did before so I'm gonna go ahead um, and we can go to clear mask right clear mask and then I'm gonna go to my brush and then I'm just going to paint it on to their faces now this would be a problem by the way if you had different skin tones or really different um here we go really different from one picture to the next because if you look over here this is the exact same skin tone that we picked previously uh, which by the way you can click and just move so i notice this is a little bit more darker and a little bit more orange so i'm going to move this here towards more of the orange saturation and then i'm actually going to lower this would be a good time to do this right lower the the density so you see her skin tone changing in the middle all right uh, just a little bit so it kind of matches and now through this i mean i can go crazy i can just quickly go over um their arms see how it just smooths everything out right nothing and this is a good example for like nice and warm up here but down here because their hands are down there it's just a little bit colder so if i go like this just applying that skin smoothing now there's more of a match between the two right there all right and let me just 
zoom that out so you can see. Actually, let's just deselect so it was before and after. All right, so just a little bit of skin smoothing that you can do right there in Capture One. So hope that's helpful. I like number one better, but that's just my work style, my workflow. You might like one better than the other. I like whatever produces less clicks. That's my main goal, so. <laughs> I hope you've learned a lot about skin retouching. After all, it's not just, you know, going under the eyes and taking away pimples. It has a lot to do with color, tone, saturation, and all the things that we talked about in this video. Make sure that you hit subscribe, ring my bell, and ring my bell. Oh, I do that all the time. Ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.